Johnson's Jimmy Savile slur against Keir Starmer has been met by outrage from a number of Tory MPs. And quite right, it was outrageous. But perhaps as well as speaking out of principle, some are also concerned a focus on Jimmy Savile could backfire on the Conservatives. Because paedophile Jimmy Savile had a long history of friendships and influence with several Tory MPs, going all the way to the very top of the party. Hello, welcome. Come in. I must introduce our friends. You're Lucy. Um, When you were small, did you ever want to be the Prime Minister? No, when I was small, I don't think one ever thought that there could ever be a woman Prime Minister of Britain. You know, we didn't, Jimmy, in those days, did we? No, but we always hoped. We always hoped, all right. I thought you were going to fix my getting into number 10. I've already done so, but I was going to see you privately about that because I wouldn't want too many people to realise how I'd done it. Because they could all finish up with being Prime Minister. Then you give me a Jim. Jim has fixed it for me. Indeed, indeed. That's Margaret Thatcher's 1977 appearance on Jim will fix it two years before she became Prime Minister. But Savile's relationship with Thatcher would last for decades. In 2012, a Downing Street file was released to the public which showed the depth of that friendship containing records of lunches and personal correspondence between the two. It also showed that Savile had twice been to Chequers to visit the Prime Minister. Savile was invited because of his fundraising efforts at Stoke Mandeville Hospital, a place now known to be one of many where he sexually molested children and other vulnerable patients. Because you as a disc jockey, and me as the king of the disc jockeys, we think that we've got all the girls in the world that can me and these guys in. They are the governors, because we get phone calls by the minute. Sometimes they've got girlfriends queuing up downstairs. We only let them in one at a time, you see. And the only reason I'm friendly with people like this is because I nick what he doesn't want. Savile there saying the only reason he's friendly with his male teenage patients is so that he can nick the underage girls who come to visit. At one of these lunches, Savile asked Thatcher for donations, both personal and from the government. That was to rebuild Stoke Mandeville's spinal injuries unit. Thatcher agreed. She gave her own money and later the government would chip in £500,000. He wrote her this thank you note. Dear Prime Minister, I waited a week before writing to thank you for my lunch invitation because I had such a superb time, I didn't want to be too effusive. My girl patients pretended to be madly jealous and wanted to know what you wore and what you ate. All the paralysed lads called me Sir James all week. They all love you. Me too. Jimmy Savile, OBE, kiss, kiss, kiss. Savile would go on to spend New Year's Eve with the Thatcher family on a number of occasions. In 1986, when Savile was rejected for a knighthood, Thatcher personally intervened. Thatcher instructed her private secretary to write to the cabinet office saying, she wonders how many more times his name is to be pushed aside, especially in view of all the great work he has done for Stoke Mandeville. And it's not just Thatcher who's potentially implicated. In 1988, the then Health Secretary Ken Clark suspended the entire management board of Broadmoor Psychiatric Hospital. Savile, who had been volunteering at Broadmoor for a number of years, was put in charge of the task force that replaced the management. This was approved by Junior Health Minister Edwina Curry. Essentially, Curry handed him the keys to a secure facility housing very vulnerable people. We are a great listening hospital. We listen to people. I listen to nurses. I listen to doc- I listen to porters. I listen to drivers. I listen to everybody. We've turned into a great listening hospital. When asked why she had appointed him to the role, Curry later gave this explanation. What we were in the process of trying to do was improve the life of patients there because it was being run like a prison. And many of them were there for a very long time without having been convicted of anything, would eventually be um, able to go back to normal life. We wanted to improve the life of the people in there. And so we asked various people, chaired by a a senior civil servant, to give us some ideas on how they felt the life of patients could be improved. And Jimmy made an appointment to see me. And um, he said, I'm full of ideas. I'm full of lots of ideas. And then what he came up with, was actually quite odd. And looking at it now, I think I can see what he was getting up to. He'd gone through the payroll and found out that some of the prison officers were paying themselves more than they were supposed to get. He had gone through the property... How did he have access to the payroll? That's weird, isn't it? That's a good question. We had asked him to advise us on how to improve the lives of... Because 
patient. Okay, but it's been presented as that you put him in charge of a task force that were kind of running the place. That's no. He was not in charge. Okay. Civil servant was in charge. But had you appointed him to this task force? Do you know? I uh, is my my memory of it is that he offered himself. Okay. Recommend himself, and you accept him at the time, and I suppose sure, because everybody did. Yeah, you were, in a way you were duped by him as well because everybody was. In fact, when Savile told Curry his plans for reforming the hospital, which included union busting, Curry wrote "at a boy" in her diaries. Nor is it true that everyone was duped. Several staff within Broadmoor voiced their concerns about Savile. Well, I'd long considered him, as many of my colleagues did as a man with a severe personality disorder with, with a liking for children. What was the talk among staff? He was regarded as a paedophile. B- and, by you, by the but, professional staff? And the paedophile patients, many of those knew that he was a paedophile. I'd say he was a psychopath. I would actually say he was, he was without a doubt. It's just the way his attitude was, his, his, his blasé attitude to everything. He didn't seem to care or worry about anything. A lot of our staff always said he should be behind the bars. And we used to laugh about it in those days. Then, one night while patrolling the perimeter fence, Bob Allen stopped laughing. Jimmy Savile's car pulled into Broadmoor and parked outside the terraced house that he'd been given by the hospital. I actually saw him step out and he stepped out with a young girl. Did she look um, like a child? Did she look like a... She was certainly over 13, I would have said. Um, but she was, she was, she was definitely not, not of an adult age. She, she was under 16, I would have said. That's the way I, that, that was the look that she had. Then Bob Allen noticed something else. The young girl had just taken part in a local village carnival. The girl had wore, was wearing a sash. Um, so she was obviously a girl off one of the floats that from the carnival that day. I said, hello, Jim, and, and, and there was a, just a nod at me. There was no mention back. I just walked on and I watched him go into the house. I saw the lights go on. I carried on walking and I just kept on looking. And I was thinking to myself at the time, you know, what's, what's going on here? Then Bob Allen saw the lights go off in the house. So you saw this, you, you felt that it was wrong. And what, what did you do about it? I went into our, our gated area where I saw my immediate superior then. And as far as I know, he reported it. And uh, the following day, I asked what was the outcome. And it was really just, well, nobody appears to be interested. Indeed, Savile was knighted in 1990 after four failed attempts to make him a sir. Thatcher finally succeeded in her final year in office. It wouldn't be until 2012, a year after Savile's death, that the true scale of his crimes would become public knowledge. Inquiries began after a 2012 ITV documentary examined claims of sexual abuse against Savile. It would result in internal investigations at the BBC, the NHS, the Department of Health and the Crown Prosecution Service. Ultimately, over 450 suspected victims would come forward. 28 were children under 10 at the time of the abuse, and 63 were girls between 13 and 16. Still, even then, top Tories couldn't stop themselves from defending him. In 2013, Norbert Tebbit, once a member of Thatcher's government and now in the Lords, told The Guardian, I've got no doubt Jimmy Savile was a very odd fellow, and I'm pretty sure he was in breach of the law on a number of matters, but I do not know that it's possible 40 years on to do justice in the sense of knowing just how many of those allegations are complete and true. Jimmy did a great deal of good as well as wrong, and in anybody's life, you have to look at both sides of the ledger. God, for someone who abused multiple children, you cannot look at both sides of the ledger. And also, it's just such a ridiculous thing to say, because what is the other side of the ledger? Oh, he did all of this charitable work. Well, we know now the charitable work was to get access to children so that he could abuse them, or to corpses so that he could abuse them. There aren't two sides to this ledger. And for someone to say that in 2013, like, wow. And what does that tell you as well? The claim that is made, right, by people who should have known, people who should have known what Jimmy Savile was up to, they were saying, well, clearly we didn't know because if we did know, we would have been so shocked that we would have instantly gone to the authorities. And if they were the highest authorities, such as the prime minister or a cabinet member, they would have done something about it. Well, what does Norman Tebbit reveal here? He actually, you know, it's now been presented to him in black and white what Jimmy Savile did 
And he still doesn't think it's that big a deal. And, and that does make it plausible that they knew at the time and they didn't care because they didn't think that abusing multiple children in vulnerable situations was a red line. You know, this guy was a TV personality. He was making money for charity. Why shouldn't he get to abuse children? Now, obviously, I'm not saying Norbert Tebbit said those words. I'm not saying Margaret Thatcher said those words. But you do see here what seems like a minimizing of what happened. And if people are willing to minimize what happened now or in 2013 after these revelations came out, then it's very easy to imagine how they would have minimized them if they knew about them at the time. And what you saw from those interviews with with members of of staff in places where Jimmy Savile worked or where he was placed or where he volunteered or where he was you know, given a chairman role when it came to hiring people, they were saying, we all knew, we told people above us and they didn't care. Now, as I say, I don't know all of the details of this, partly because Britain hasn't had a proper reckoning with this. But it's, I mean, I, maybe there are too many people who want this to be brushed under the carpet. And so, so that won't happen. Too many people are implicated. That's quite possible. But it seems plausible to me that if you've got those people who are in staff, they're telling their management about it and their management don't care. One possibility is that, you know, every manager in all of these institutions was a sociopath who didn't care that you had Jimmy Savile walking around abusing children. The other possibility is some of them weren't sociopaths and they tried to go to the people above them, right? And it was the people above them who said, oh no, actually, we don't want to look into this. Actually, can you just shut your staff up? This isn't a big deal. Or it could even have been the, the people above them. Because I think if someone gets away with something to this extent, you either have to have loads and loads and loads of sociopaths in middle management, or the problem goes right to the top. You know, I have too much faith in, in, in humanity to think that there were that many sociopaths in middle management. So I think it probably went to the top. And who was the top during that period of time? Well, it was mostly Margaret Thatcher. It was mostly the Conservatives. And now you have the sight of Boris Johnson standing up in Parliament after saying that investigations into historic child abuse was just spaffing money up the wall. Now he's saying, ah, Jimmy Savile, that's Keir Starmer's problem. Well, even if Keir Starmer was director of public prosecutions for a year when they decided to not properly investigate Jimmy Savile, obviously they should have done. He then went to review it afterwards and apologized on behalf of the CPS for that. Boris Johnson has no right to stand up and make that claim about anyone else because it's, it's his party more than anyone else that is implicated in this. And he has demonstrated by those words about spaffing money up the wall that he has absolutely no interest or whatsoever in one, achieving any justice for these children or, or the multiple other people that Jimmy Savile abused. And two, has no interest in making sure this will never happen again. Because unless you work out what really happened, who were the people who were told about this and then who told people to shut up about it? Oh, we don't look into that. Who were they? How were they allowed to get away with it? Unless we have solid answers to those questions, then it's going to be very difficult to make sure this, this won't happen again. And I personally don't have much confidence that, you know, maybe not to the extent of this, you know, with, with, with social media and much more sort of ability for people to whistleblow, maybe some of those staff, if they had Twitter, maybe one of them would have contacted a journalist, for example. I think something to this scale probably is much less likely now than it was then. But I have absolutely no confidence whatsoever that the British establishment has been serious enough when it's asked, or I mean, it's failed to ask, frankly, how was this able to happen, that something along these lines, even if not as extreme, will be able to happen again. And that, not not Keir Starmer being director of the CPS for, for a year at the point when this was not investigated, you know, in the late 2000s. You know, maybe there's a problem there, but the much bigger problem is that this was allowed to happen for decades when it seems kind of implausible that not a lot of people in very powerful positions had at least an idea of what was going on and thought this is not worth the time. It's not worth intervening. Let's just let it happen. Thank you.